Okay, today I want to talk about PCOS, which is called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And lots of people have asked me to cover this topic. And I think it's really interesting. There seems to be a bit more openness about a lot of these women's health problems, like I talked about in my video for endometriosis. These problems affect so many women, but actually a lot of it goes under the radar or women don't think they can talk about it or they're just told to kind of shut up and put up, get on with your periods, get on with your problems. So I think it's really important to talk about these these issues. What is it? What can we do about it? How do we diagnose it? Um, and what support is there? So let's find out. So PCOS. It is really common. So we think one in 10 women are affected by this, but actually more than half of them probably don't have any symptoms. And although the name is polycystic ovarian syndrome, it isn't actually cysts on the ovaries. Actually what it is, is follicles on the ovaries that are supposed to develop the egg and then release the egg for ovulation. These eggs are not being released. So there's no ovulation, which means the periods become irregular or stop. You may have noticed this. And then these follicles just keep on growing on the outside of the ovaries, so the ovaries become enlarged with all these follicles. So we don't know the cause for this, but we think it's hormone related because women who have PCOS have a resistance to a hormone called insulin. So the body creates more of it to compensate. This then has other effects. So the, um, the body then produces more androgens. When we think of that in PCOS, we're often talking about testosterone. And then the hormones can also go awry when it comes to the periods and there can be dysregulation in those hormones as well. If you are one of the women who does suffer with symptoms for PCOS, then you might notice that your periods change. So they become very irregular or you have no periods at all. If you're trying to get pregnant, you may struggle to get pregnant. Or you may have symptoms related to this excess androgen. So that's too much of this testosterone. Um, that can be things like acne. It can be thinning of the hair. It can be weight gain and it can be something called hirsutism where you get excess hair in certain areas and that's often on the face, on the chest, on the back and on the bottom. So not only these kind of physical changes in your body but also how you look and when you're often at the age that this gets diagnosed about kind of late teens, early 20s, unfortunately how you look is quite important to your mental well-being and things, isn't it? So it's important to, to recognise what effects this can have on women's mental health and well-being as well. So if you're thinking, well, I've got some of those symptoms, but maybe not all of them, and you're wondering if maybe you've got PCOS, um, we uh, health professionals use something called the Rotterdam Criteria to help diagnose it, which states you've got to have two out of the following three things. So you've got to have irregular periods or no periods. You've got to have evidence of this kind of high androgens and high testosterone, whether that be on a blood test or whether that be the signs and symptoms that I've just mentioned. Or thirdly, it's got to be evidence of these follicles on a pelvic ultrasound. So you've got to have two out of those three things. So the periods, irregular or stopped, uh, evidence of this high androgens and testosterone, and thirdly, the ultrasound showing that lots of follicles on the ovaries. So if you've got two of those three things, then we can confidently go ahead and diagnose PCOS. Treatment. Now, it really is important to get some treatment if you think you have got PCOS. This is because not only you can help with those symptoms that we've talked about, but actually if you don't do anything about it, it can cause other problems in the future. So if you have PCOS and it's not treated, uh, you have an increased risk of things like type 2 diabetes, of heart disease, um, and unfortunately also of endometrial cancer. So the womb, the lining of the womb is called the endometrium. So it's cancer of the womb that, that you're at risk of. And that's because if you're not having enough periods, the, the womb thickens, ready to try and have a period, but the period doesn't come. And when the womb is too thick, the lining of the womb is too thick, that's when you're at risk of endometrial cancer. So you do need treatment to make sure we can thin the lining of the womb and reduce the risk of those other problems like heart disease and type 2 diabetes. Another really important reason why we do need to treat PCOS is because it is actually one of the leading causes of infertility. Most women can get pregnant with PCOS, so it doesn't mean you can't get pregnant, but it may make things a bit trickier. But the sooner you get treatment, the better. So let's have a think about what treatment options there are. So in terms of management of PCOS, the most important thing you can do is, if you're carrying too much weight, is to try and lose weight. Weight loss can help stabilize your insulin and your excess testosterone, therefore helping things like acne and your hirsutism. Um, weight loss can also help uh, increase your chances of getting pregnant if that's what you want. It can help bring back your normal periods. Uh, it can also reduce your risk of that type 2 diabetes and heart disease. 
In fact, just five to 10% weight loss can help stabilize your hormones and bring your periods back to normal. So really important to try and focus on that. As to how about that, there's obviously so much information out there. What I would say is there's an absence of evidence that any one diet is better than the other. So choose something that you can afford and that makes you feel good because it's got to be something that you can do forever. If you're interested in things like intermittent fasting, I've got a video all about that. You may want to take a look. I've also got a video all about acne. So if, you want, if you're suffering with acne and you want to find out a bit more how, about how you can manage that separately to PCOS, have a look at my video on that as well. Going back to management, there is some screening that uh, any woman who has PCOS should do. So once a year, you should have a blood pressure check and also a diabetes blood sugar check, just because you're at risk of type two diabetes. Um, your doctor or nurse may also just check for any symptoms of sleep apnea because that's often something that women with PCOS also have. And also just to make sure your mood is okay, as we've mentioned. So if you've got any problems like that, then definitely do reach out and uh, give your GP surgery a call. Other treatment options, um, you may be offered a cyclical progesterone that might help settle your hormones and settle your periods um, and reduce your risk of endometrial cancer. This could be something like midroxyprogesterone, or it could be a low dose combined oral contraceptive pill. That actually can also sometimes be good for the hirsutism and acne as well. Or you could be offered a Mirena coil. All those things could help thin that lining of the womb, reduce your risk of endometrial cancer, and stabilize your hormones. In terms of fertility treatment, if you do want to get pregnant and you are struggling, um, most, chance, most likely you'll be referred to a fertility specialist and there are lots of treatments available. There could be drug treatments, there's IVF, there's surgical options. So most women with PCOS are able to get pregnant. I think that's a really key thing to remember. And finally, a lot of uh, women come and ask me about metformin use for PCOS. Unfortunately, it isn't licensed in the UK for PCOS or regulating periods or weight loss, certainly not from us GPs. Um, some specialists can use metformin in an off-license way, um, so that's a possibility, but for most of the time, metformin isn't an option for PCOS. Okay, so that's a quick rundown of everything PCOS. I would suggest you go and have a look at the website Verity. That is the charity and support group for women who have PCOS and they've got local groups, they've got peer support groups and lots more information. So do check that out. Um, I've got loads of other videos if you want to have a look. One's a few I've mentioned on this video. And do share this with anyone else who may also find it useful. Thanks so much, see you in my next video.